The Mars Desert Research Station is in Hanksville, Utah. It's about seven kilometers away from the, the town proper. Uh, you have to access it through what we call Cow Dung Road. And it was built for the idea that folks would work in a simulated Mars environment. So these are the fruits. So these are, this is papaya, and as you can see, everything is completely bone dry. My sleeping bag, um, it's not that comfy. I have a pillow and a couple of sleeping pads, but it gets the job done. <laughs> and it's uniquely situated in a very flat area, but adjacent to it are mountainous terrain in which biologists and geologists and uh, others, um, engineers, uh, can either do scientific research or go out and they test equipment in the field and see how it would work in, in extreme environments. The principal thing that we're testing is these armband GPS devices. So we came up with this idea of incorporating a GPS into base, ideally the sleeve of your suit. Uh, right now we're not there yet, so we're using regular touchscreen GPS devices. We're putting them into these armbands. Um, and we're going on the EVS and testing them out. So when they leave the, the hab, they have to be dressed in a spacesuit because this, you know, keeping to the simulation, cracking the front door to the habitat means you're on the surface of Mars, in theory. Right here is our regular airlock. This is where the crew will usually have to do decompression before they go in and out of the hab. What we do in this decompression chamber is purely simulation. Um, we don't actually decompress, but Whenever we're here, I can, it's a very long five minutes, especially when you know it's purely simulation. Yeah. The biggest challenge, the lack of contact for sure. The work we do is very important, but it's on such a strict regiment that there's also times that we get bored. <laughs> and it's in those times that I'm bored that I wish I could just like text my friends or call my mom. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the people who plan those big, huge trips would need to have this experience to actually know what you're talking about. Well, the Mars Society is a grassroots membership organization which is dedicated to educating the public and media and others about uh, the importance of the exploration and settlement of the planet Mars. Go to Mars. We do a bunch of these landings, set up a networks of HABs allowing you to revisit uh, multiple locations, explore continent size areas on Mars. And then the primary question on Mars is going to change to the question of will there be life on Mars? There's nothing on the horizon at the moment for human spaceflight at NASA and that makes all of us very, very sad. And, and many of the NASA scientists and the astronauts very, very sad because they have worked all their lives uh, hoping to see humans on Mars. NASA has the same budget today as it had four years ago. Four years ago, there was this thing called the shuttle program, which was $5 billion. Everybody said then that, well, the shuttle's gone, we'll have all kinds of money to do planetary exploration and other stuff. And in fact, we're doing less. The Mars Society is funded entirely by membership and corporate donations. Philanthropists uh, frequently will make large donations. Film producers, Jim Cameron. Elon Musk made a large uh, donation for the Musk Observatory. We used his money to build that. So that's the source of funds, and without those, our little nonprofit organization would, would quickly disappear. So we're very lucky that people uh, give freely. And we must have inspiring things in the world. Uh, life cannot just be about solving you know, this problem or that problem. There must be things that when you wake up in the morning, you're glad to be alive. And, and that, I think, is, for me, the most important reason why we should pursue the establishment of life on Mars. Elon and his team at SpaceX, in my opinion, are the ones who are actually going to do this. They're fairly well funded. They're working in cooperation with NASA, which is a great idea. SpaceX, is, they're the ones that are going to get this job done, one way or the other. used to things in, in the consumer electronics realm and in everyday life improving, we sort of take it for granted, like it's as though things automatically improve. They do not automatically improve. They only improve with lots of effort and, and resources. It has to be a forcing function. People have to do it. 
it's hard, but at the same time, I think it really keeps us on track that there's six of us and we all have the same goal for the mission and we all try to take this as seriously as possible because we do care about this. What is the goal for the mission? I think it's just to expose us to what it's really like because there's only so much that you can learn in the classroom.